I would like to show you Starry Sky Stacker. Starry Sky Stacker is a Mac application intended for stacking or combining groups of images taken of the night sky using a long lens on a camera mounted with an equatorial mount so the camera and lens are tracking the stars in the sky. This renders all the stars as points and you take multiple images to help with noise reduction and also because there can be slight errors in the tracking. So each individual image, the stars will be quite sharp, but there can be differences between the images. And then by aligning the images and then combining them, we can get a final image with low noise and the stars as points. So let's open some uh, images to look at. Here's a set of 30 images that Kaja Zidel has been uh, nice enough to uh, let me use for testing and uh, demonstration purposes. So we're loading all 30 images uh, and then we're aligning the images and then we'll estimate quality and sort the image images by the estimated quality. These 30 images were taken over the course of about an hour so each image is each image has an exposure of about two minutes. The individual images are quite sharp. The stars are rendered as points, but there is some drift over the course of the hour. So there is, it is necessary to align the images before stacking them. Um, so now we have our 30 images aligned and we've got quality estimates for all of them. So let's uh, zoom in here. I use the Z key for that, but I can use this button over here. Okay, look here. Now this slider lets us determine how many images we will be combining in our final result. Uh, the default is to take the best half. If you have a good number of images, in this case we do, we have 30 images, it will take the best half of the images, so the best 15 by default. But we can move the slider around and we're always looking at, over here at the image, we're looking at the least good of the images that we will be combining. So as we drag this along, uh, you can see that these stars are not quite round. They're getting a bit blobby. Uh, they're not as nice and round and sharp as say the stars we get when we're over uh, moving the slider to the left and getting the better images. It turns out, I think, that 15 is probably the right answer in this case. So we'll leave it at 15. Uh, but I will show you down here that we have a menu where we can jump to any image. So let's jump up to 17 just for fun. And I could exclude this image or include it with these buttons here or with the X and the I key. Uh, we now have it included. The X here indicates images that are excluded. The check mark is showing us the one we're currently looking at. Uh, so we're all good and happy with this. So let's just say composite. So now what's happening is for each pixel, uh, we're doing two rounds of outlier rejection followed by taking the median. That gives us a very good final result. Uh, I chose not to save it because of course I've done this before and I have lots of images, but uh, lots of copies of it, but I could have just uh, given a name there and hit save to save it. Instead, what I'll do here is I'll just play with these controls here just to give us a preview of uh, what it might look like after we're finished editing the result with our uh, favorite image editing software. We have nice round stars and pretty low noise. There's very little noise showing right now in these dark areas. And let's zoom out to look at the whole image. So there we have it. The best 15 images out of the set of 30 composited. And uh, we could quickly export that to a file. So thanks to Kaja Zeidel for uh, letting us use these images. And let me look at a, now at another set of images. And these, uh, Derek Lim is letting me use these for testing and demonstration purposes. So let's load them. So in this case, we only have 10 images. We're going through the same process here of uh, uh, loading the images, aligning the images, estimating the quality, and then sorting the images by estimated quality. Uh, one thing that uh, Derek did was uh, he was using a tracking device with his uh, a fairly long lens and a camera here. But something he did was every third frame or so, somewhere around every three frames, he would move the camera just a little bit manually. And the idea behind this is to try and mitigate the effects of fixed pattern noise. One of the consequences of doing this is when you align the images, you get these artifacts in the corners.
because some of the images are moved quite a ways relative to the other. So if you zoom in here on the corner, you can see there's something funny going on. That's to be expected because the camera is moving quite a bit. Uh, that's fine. We can work with that. Uh, in this case, uh, we've only got 10 images. So by default, we're seeing all 10 images. We can click through them here. Let's zoom in first. We can click through them here and see, yeah, they're all pretty good, pretty sharp. Uh, so we'll just take all 10. We'll say composite and save. And there's the 10 images. Now I could save these. I could change the name if I want to. I will just cancel because I've done this before. I have copies of this image. And uh, we can uh, double click these to return to default. So this is what's been saved, a fairly low contrast image. And that's uh, basically the images we started from are low contrast like that. Go back to the result. Uh, we can just, for preview purposes, we can just tweak these a little bit. Maybe we're going to end up with something a bit like that once we're finished editing this with our image editing software. We've got lots of stars, nice and sharp. They're round. Uh, very little noise in the dark areas between the stars. And if we zoom out, we have a pretty good image. We're going to have to crop off the edges because of the uh, manual movement of the camera occasionally. But that's fine. That's what we're expecting to do. And uh, from a fairly small sample, in this case, only 10 images, but you have a pretty good result. And again, thanks to Derek Lim for letting us uh, work with these images.